hey guys welcome back to the channel in this video i'll be solving this puzzle called xml1 find the score it is about xml parsing in python uh, and uh, you will find this problems when you will tick uh, unsolved easy and here xml these are the two easy problems uh, here you can uh, uh, see xml is something new uh, let's go inside so xml will be it's similar to what you can say is uh, uh, markup language it's it's extended markup language i think uh, similar to html uh, build uh, it is used to build uh, website pages and all so i don't have much idea about this so let's uh, see what all things are there so here you can see uh, you are given a valid xml document you have to print its score the score is uh, calculated uh, by the sum of the score of each element for any element the score is equal to number of attributes it has so there will be a xml document and we have to print its score and the score is calculated by sum of uh, score of each element now each element score will be calculated by counting the number of attributes it has okay that's all we have to do now the input will be like this the first line will give the number of lines uh, in the xml document and then in the next n lines the xml document will be given and we have to print in single line output the integer score of the given xml document that's all we have to do now the sample input you can see here this is the number of lines in xml document 1 2 3 4 5 6 total 6 so the value here is 6 and from the next 6 line onwards you are getting the xml document okay uh, here you can see this uh, looks like uh, html you can see that there are tags there are there is root element then uh, children's are there uh, we will see all this now what what exactly it is doing it is printing the score it is counting the number of attributes in each element so this is uh, one element another element third fourth fifth six, six, like this okay so this is one element then title is one element subtitle is one link is one updated is one they are open and closed like this you can see what are the attributes these are the attributes with equal sign so lang in here you can see lang in then here it is type html rel uh, then href is there you can see that these are the attributes so total how many of them are there one two three four five so five is the output you can see okay the explanation you can see feed and subtitle have one attribute each which is called lang so feed is this guy which is having lang attribute and subtitle is this guy having lang attribute you can see it is written here then the title updates have uh, no add title updated tags have no attributes is title updated tags have no attribute you can see only text are there then uh, you have link tag which has three attributes rel type and href you can see that link rel type and href okay so these are the the attributes total there is one plus one plus three that is equal to five now there may be any level of nesting in the xml documents okay so the, here you can see title is uh, feeds child right so that's how you call the title is the child of it title subtitle link updated they are child of feed now child, child title can also have its own child then subtitle can also have its own child and it can go on and on so that's what it is saying any level of nesting in the xml document and to learn about xml parsing we can follow this link okay we will see i'll go through it so a bit long video i'm planning because i want to explain explain uh, xml and then i want to go for parsing okay in order to par parse means like scrapping it means like you are taking content from the page okay so from the xml document so you can see here we are taking attributes what are the attributes and all okay so that's what it is um, here you can see um, these are the libraries xml dot e tree dot elementary and you are writing it as e tree then uh, by using e tree you can uh, convert your xml document uh, uh, 
into to 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 a variable containing the string you can see here here xml is a variable containing the string then try to find the number of keys in the dictionary use length function so we will see how how a suddenly dictionary is coming up and why we are using its length so we will see all these in documentation okay so here what is given uh, you can see here uh, the libraries are given sys is used for reading the lines here you can see sys then it will read uh, the xml document it will convert into uh, a string form then it will get the root root will be the the this guy root uh, feed is the root here right so that that root will be taken so this whole package will come inside this root and then uh, uh, it is passing on to get attribute number here you can see uh, to node here we have to write our code okay so for that we have to learn xml uh, coding so libraries are there there is some built-in function given to us but just we have to calculate the number of attribute numbers means how many attributes are carried by each element for that we are going here you can see this is the link given to us by by here when i clicked uh, where here so here you can see uh, there is a short crash crash course type uh, given to us so here you can see this is the 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 actual xml document looks like you can also open in a new window and look like this so this is how it will look you can see right it's similar to what we see in html pages right now here you can see feed is the root uh, then they are the child entry is another child entries child is author uh, title link id category then summary is another child uh, of feed so likewise it is arranged in this manner okay we don't have to go to all the details just have to know the basic structure i'll close it so what all these things mean let's go through this this is a long xml document given to us just for example now if you'll go here 12.2 this was 12.1 i think right so 12 point no nothing was there 12.2 so i think 12 12.1 anyway so 12.2 a five minute crash course in xml so you you have to know about xml to solve this question that's why i am going through it uh, briefly so if you already know xml you can skip it so xml is generally describing hierarchical structure contains one or more element which are delimited by start and end tags okay so this is the first is the start tag you can see foo and uh, close tag will be with uh, this for uh, forward slash okay so matching and ending tag of the foo element you can see and parameter start tag must be closed by a corresponding end tag so this is start tag end tag this is complete xml document now here you can see element can be nested to any depth we have we already know an element bar inside an element foo is said to be sub element or child of foo so bar is the child of foo you can see uh, so that's why it is it is aligned like this there is a space inside foo it is there so first element in every document is called root element an xml document can only have one root element following is not the xml document because it has two roots you can see if there can only be one root element in one xml document okay so there is foo here uh, you can't have another uh, root bar okay here also you can see feed is the is the root element okay feed is the big guy grandfather type and inside that all the elements are there children are there. all of all of these guys are children of feed you can think of so there is only one root then uh, what you have elements can have attributes which are name pair values uh, attributes are listed within the start tag of the element and separated by white space attribute names cannot be repeated within the element attribute uh, values must be quoted you must use either single or double quote you can see elements have uh, can have attribute which is this uh, shaded line you can see uh, which are name pair values this is the name and this is the value so name pair value attributes are listed within the start tag of the element uh, and um, separated by white space you can see there is a space 
then attribute names can not be repeated within an element you can see within the element uh, it has a language attribute this guy also has language attributes but it is within the element outside element we can use it right so the both have same attribute but they they are in different elements that's why uh, it is allowed now attribute values must be quoted you can see single quote or double quote you can use here uh, values you may either use single or double quotes okay so uh, hopefully you are having this structure in your head now so we started with this uh, root thing child thing then attributes we came so slowly we are going to our problem foo element has one attribute called name uh, lang and the value is en this is about first circle second circle is about bar element has two attributes name id and rank you can see here also this is also an attribute naming id and its value is papaya whip okay uh, the value is our lang is fr and this doesn't conflict with the foo element in the way because each element has its own attribute okay if an element has more than one attribute the ordering of attribute is not significant you can order in any way you can an element uh, attribute uh, form an unordered set of keys and values you can see here python dictionary is coming into picture and there is no limit to the number of attributes you can define on each element you can have any number of attributes uh, with respect to one element okay elements can have text content you can see here this this shaded line this is called as text text of uh, so bar is the element uh lang is the attribute and papaya whip is the text and this is the closing uh, of uh, element okay then element can have no text no children so this is empty one then there is a shorthand for writing empty elements which is like this so this whole thing can be written like this by putting a character you can skip the end tag and the xml like that so this is not at all uh, required to us uh, main thing is our attribute uh, with respect to this problem like python function can be declared in different module xml documents can be declared in different namespaces so there you can also assign namespace this the shaded region you can see is the namespace namespace usually looks like url you can uh, you use an xml ns means xml namespace declaration to find uh, a default namespace the namespace declaration looks similar to an attribute but it has different purpose you can see first guy so the feed element is in uh, this is namespace and uh, the title element is also having uh, this as namespace the namespace declaration affects the element where it is declared plus all its children so this namespace if you will declare it in root it will affect it will it will be associated automatically to its children as well then you can also use xml ns prefix declaration to define namespace associated with it so these things are not at all required you can go through this uh, if you want i'll i'll uh, i'll go i'll explain the stuff which is relevant here for this problem as far as xml two previous are identical namespace plus element name so these explanations you can see then uh, xml documents can also contain character encoding information here you can see this guy on the first line and before the root element okay so before the root element here also you might have seen see before the root element this encoding information is given this is the root okay so um, yeah where were we so namespaces then encoding information and now you just know the uh, enough xml to be dangerous <laughs> then the structure of an atom feed you can see here not required uh, not at all required atom feeds you can go through this explanation if you want to okay uh, just the basic stuff i want to tell you about so that you will get a feel of solving this problem uh, dive into mark uh, this is another feed level meta is the list of the most recent article so you can see the children's are there uh and uh, metadata is there then this id and all explanation about all these things you can see now what we have to actually do we have to actually parse the xml so by using python so let's go through this python can parse xml documents in several ways it has traditional dom and sex uh, parsers but i will focus on the different library called 
elementary so elementary we have to use here right elementary so we are slowly diving into the problem uh, here you can see some example so it has imported e tree just like here e tree has been imported then uh, there is something called e tree dot parse has been done uh, example slash so there is an xml file we are we are uh, loading it type of thing we are doing in tree okay in the variable called tree once you have a uh, uh, tree uh, you can get the root by using dot get root bracket so you'll get the root from the tree and if you will print the root you will see this thing okay so namespace is reflected feed is there so it is basically representing that feed root okay um, so it's it doesn't mean only feed is there inside that you have uh, uh, what say all its childrens as well it's there's a package full package is there okay, so you see the explanation here if you want mm -hmm. then uh, represent the namespace local uh, elements are list okay so here you can see an element acts like a list the items of the list are the elements children so continued from the previous example if you do root dot tag this is what you are getting getting the tag feed is the tag okay that same element or feed tag you can say same thing and length is length of the root is eight roots length is eight means it is having eight children's now how you want to access these guys you just run a for loop called child as variable in root and you print the child you see this is what you will get so you can see there is title subtitle id updated link entry 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 these are the elements of root root is what feed you can see here and this is the namespace so you can see how you are accessing the xml document okay, we have to uh, do the tag stuff and uh, you can print the length you can you can run a for loop to access these individual childs then uh, uh, then attributes this is what we have to look for right uh, our dictionaries they are dictionaries so the elements are list these are dictionaries now you can see the use of these guy uh, dictionaries length why we need we need to count the attributes because attributes are stored as dictionaries okay here you can see continued from previous example if you do the roots dot attrib you'll get the attrib of uh, attribute of the first guy the feed guy the the root guy if you do uh, root 4 you you will get link here and if you do root 4 attribute you'll get the attribute of link okay you see how uh, we are accessing and this uh, again is uh, stored as a dictionary then uh, if you print root 3 you can see this is updated one updated element and if you do root 3 dot attrib yeah, you remember updated doesn't have any 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 attributes so that is how you access the attributes of each element you can see the details here then searching for the node within an xml a document so this is from top to bow down you can see if you want to x uh, means like find something specific node within the xml document this is very comes in uh, very helpful i think this i'll be using okay so throughout the document but, but many users of xml require you to find a specific element e tree can uh, do that too you can see that so you are you are targeting a specific element then you can you can do that so you have to import the library then again parse get root and from root only you have to play okay so root dot find all entries so it will make an array of entries you can see only elements are there which are entry because we have specifically targeting the element okay. how many entries are there entry element are there in in our xml document that is what it is figuring out root dot tag is feed root dot find all feed so there is no extra feed in 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 inside root okay then find all author if there is any author or not there is no author okay so it is uh, returning blank array then find all is very helpful it finds child elements that matches a specific query so i'll be using this you can also find all the all the elements like um, a dot uh, double slash if you do 
you'll get all elements so that i have searched in internet i got to know that okay because i was solving this problem then again you can find all element here you can see tree dot find all uh, from tree also you can do that in this tree uh, if you don't want to use uh, uh, what uh, um, the, the root but i'll be using uh, mostly root only here you can see what all things is required so length you can see the entries entry of the length so because you have here how many entries are there so you can uh, see that then you can access the text as well so there is a lot of things about uh, the xml you can find here you can find the grandchildren children's nesting level at any nesting level uh, then uh, you can you can you can see here see all links find all which have links so means element links then all links you print so you can see here link 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 so in whatever line uh, order wise uh, it is there in xml document all of it will be saved here so this is a package the link link package will be there so if you will do all links zero which is this guy and you find the attribute it will find the attribute and store it as python dictionary okay similar thing for link second link third link fourth link like this you can do then uh, you can also use lxml okay lxml is uh, is uh, one step uh, more type of uh, uh, xml library you can uh, think of uh, same thing but uh, with slightly different text uh, context and it is for i think linux uh, but it is available for uh, windows as well uh here you can see the 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 they are similar kind of stuff is there but just a uh, different syntax you might find and you might be able to do a lot of things extra things as well so you can you can uh, you can also generate xml files so here we'll be getting an xml uh this but you can also make your own by using python uh, xml files uh, these all data is not required parsing broken xml you can also parse broken one and that's all nothing much so i hope you got the feel uh, what we are going to do here so that your mind is framed in that zone now so just we going to play with um, the the attributes and and the feed stuff so now you 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 see this lines you will get uh, again so sys is imported uh, to just read the lines this is to read the lines then uh, when you read it is stored in xml okay so xml now it is converted into a string uh, and stored as tree by using e tree then uh, you can get the root root will be this here feed right it is stored in root and this same root is uh, sent to function get attribute number as node so node is same as root now what i'll do is i'll show you print node so that you will get a feel okay you can see here this is element feed now you can't access the child right this is not how you are going to access the child this none is printed because of this we are not returning anything so we, it has printed none now uh, if you want to access uh, the childs you have seen that uh, there was one for loop right here this this for loop this for loop we can use and access the child so i'll remove just i'm going through the same way you have seen what you have seen in the document so that you can re relate easily my computer is really slow now i think i need to purchase one new one so print child root so instead of root we have here node right here i can delete this stuff so you have already seen the feed now if i'll run this you will get to see what all things is inside inside the xml document so here this is the xml document and you can see the the elements so title is there link subtitle uh, you can see inside feed you have title subtitle link updated okay 
uh, here you can see like this on the similar if you will see the text case 0 no text case 1 here you have a feed a title a subtitle link updated entry okay here also you can see these are the child title subtitle link updated entry now uh, what do we have to do we have to figure out uh, the 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 attributes right attributes we have to find so for uh, counting the attributes let me make a variable called count equal to zero okay then we want to update the count uh, variable so this is inside the node right so for node can also have its attribute you can see here node can also have uh, the root root can also have its own attribute so equal to count plus now you can see that uh, these are uh, uh, how we gonna get the attributes we have seen that it is dot attrib right here you can see dot attrib so that will create a dictionary but we have to find the the length right this length will be calculated by uh, this this thing length of dictionary okay so automatically what i'll do is length node dot attrib so it will check for the root whether root is having any attribute or not if it is have uh, the root is having any attribute so it will uh, calculate its length uh, and it will add to count and it will update the count variable okay zero plus length of the attribute if the length of the 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 uh, root length of the element in root is zero it will add zero only okay so i hope you are getting the point we are not uh, uh, we are not adding the 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 attributes here we are only adding the attribute for this guy okay only for root this is for only root this line now what i'll do i'll do it for children's as well so we can access the child's in the same manner instead of printing child i'll do the count is equal to count plus length of child child i'll do child dot attrib okay attrib attrib now what i can do is here is you can print it print count print count not every time at last control c i'll print count here as well so that you will get a feel how it is printing i'll run it so you can see here first uh, it has printed one because we have uh, seen there is a, a attribute of root okay so that's why it is printed one then there is uh, uh, there are children's children's are what uh, title subtitle link update so total five it becomes okay so attribute for each of them it is checking what it is doing it is checking for each of them here in for loop so first uh, child will come it will check whether it has attribute or not if it is having at attribute then add it to count variable okay so title has it or not so it will be it will not be having any so let me print this guy so you have seen this seen this i'll remove it and this guy i'll print inside so that you will get to know the print values after each iteration so you can see first then uh, second you see here uh, uh, title is not having any attribute then subtitle is having one attribute and this is having one attribute so total it becomes two here you can see then third line it comes link so it has three attributes you can see so it becomes three plus two five okay and then it comes to updated it is not having any attribute so the it is as it is count variable then none is printed because here it is printing uh, this thing so we are not returning anything right 
so can we do the return like uh, return return what count okay so let's see what happens so sample test case 0 is passed we are correct but sample test case uh, uh, 0 is passed but uh, 1 is not passed why because we can see here entry is one child but entry is also having its own child author question and then description and they are having their own attributes you can see gender male this is attribute of author uh, type hard then type text these are the attributes of author question and description which are who, who are child of entry you can see they are inside entry okay inside entry and what our guy is doing our program is doing it is checking for the outside child only title subtitle link updated entry entry is not having any any attribute right entry is not having any attribute it if it would have uh, had any entry uh, sorry if you if it would had any uh, attribute it would look like this right like feed is having so that's why it is not counting here so we need to go inside this okay inside entry we have to go this what we can do here is um, we can make an exception we can make an exception if child dot tag is equal to is equal to entry then it will go inside okay and it will run a for loop i in child it will do the same thing what it is doing outside specifically for entry it will go inside and here what it will do is instead of child it will look for i right same thing it is doing but it is making an exception if there is entry that tag name is entry if the tag name is entry it will go inside this for loop what it is doing uh, it is uh, looking at the childs of uh, entry and then it is counting the attribute let's run it sample test cases are passed and we can submit it all the test cases are passed okay we have passed the challenge now what i want to focus here is this is not the correct way okay uh, why because uh, here it is written uh, here it is written any level of nesting is possible in xml document and this is not possible right this is not a correct way because uh, the whatever you have written it will only make an exception of entry now what can happen if any level of uh, if any level of what say nesting is involved then what could also be possible is what could also be possible is this author can also have its own child this question can also have its own child description can also have its own child and it can go on and on any level of nesting is allowed right so this this will not work if author will have its own child question will have its own child description will have its own child then we have to again write another for loop and you can't go on and on so that is this is not a correct approach i would say right although we have passed the 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 uh, the problem we have solved but that is not correct right so we need to modify it so there is a better approach what is the better approach <clears throat> uh, let me show you so now I'm gonna use that find all right so here we have seen there was something called find all so it will find yeah, this one so I'll find all the all the elements how many elements are there right by using uh, let me write one line all lm 
and here i'll write tree dot find all not tree node node dot find all then inside what i'll do is i'll do dot dot double slash so it will find all the elements of the node now let me print and show you print all lm let me run it so that you will see okay in here you can see element title is there subtitle is there link is there then update is there okay title subtitle link update and in the second case if you will see we have title subtitle link update entry author question description that's all so you can see all of it is there title subtitle link updated entry author question description so it is targeting the inner childs as well and our problem is solved if if author will have its own child it will also show that it will find all the elements okay and we have to we want this right we want this so here i'll remove this and instead of uh, writing this this is not required now this for loop special case of entry is not required we don't have to focus here only one for loop will work and that too now i'll run it all over all elements all elements right so you can see that uh, now is our problem solved right everything so instead of running the for loop in node uh, nodes children we are we are uh, looking at um, all elements and we are this i should write lm element by element we are uh, counting the attribute it will not affect uh, whether i'll write child or lm but still i'm writing it so that you will get a better feel let's run it sample test cases both are passed let's submit it all test cases are passed okay so better it this this approach is better it is solving our problem as well as uh, it is generalized even if there will be lot of children no issues and also uh, if uh, if uh, there is only one for loop it is much better computationally wise we were using two for loops previously okay so i hope you got the feel uh, i'll remove this uh, extra stuff extra lines and uh, yeah this is our code so uh, i hope you got the feel uh, let's go to the next problem now uh, something new something new you might have learned xml is uh, is uh, not even familiar to me i had to learn for this uh, i had to read this documentation uh, it took me a lot of time to to write this program actually i was not able to figure out how i'm going to do it okay so let's move on to the next problem and you'll get much more uh, feel about this xml okay